friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you six terrible books that I've read because of BookTube. There are six books on this list. I do have two honorable mentions, which are books that I DNF'd, but I just, I do blame BookTube a little bit for making me read these books. Either they were overly hyped or everybody was singing their praises. And these are books that I personally didn't like. What I do love about BookTube is that there are, you know, people that have different tastes and different likes and dislikes. What I love, you may hate. What you hate, I may love. While these are my opinions, there's other people out there that definitely have different opinions because I picked up these books because of them and then I didn't like them. So most of these books I actually don't have copies of anymore. Um, I gave them away or donated them, passed them along, but I wanna go ahead and tell you the titles and I'll pop in some pictures for you. So the first one that I wanna talk to you about and the first one that immediately came to mind is 1984 by George Orwell. This wasn't the classic for me. I was really excited about reading it because I don't read a lot of classics. So when I do, I'm really hoping that I'll like it. And I actually got this on the Overdrive app from my public library. And I'm glad that I didn't go out and purchase a copy. I really thought I was gonna like it. I was really excited about the themes that 1984 tries to share with us, but I didn't like how it was written. And it wasn't very interesting. There were a very few passages that I liked and it wasn't until maybe half of the way through the book when one particular thing happened that I started becoming interested and that was over before it like really got good. So I really didn't care for 1984. I know it has great reviews out there. I know people love it. It has a high rating on Goodreads, but I just rated it two out of five stars. The next book is a book you either like it or you don't. I don't know many people that fall in the middle with that one, with this one, and it is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I was not so keen on reading this book, but I ended up getting it for my uppercase subscription um, box last year, and everybody was singing its praises on BookTube, so I figured, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot, see what all the hype is about, and I was very disappointed. While the story wasn't terrible, it seemed to borrow a lot of similar things from other books. It did remind me a lot of The Hunger Games. It did remind me a lot of other books that I have read. I mean, it almost was like there were direct passages taken out of other books and put in this book. So I felt like it was a mismatch of different books that I had read. And since I've already read them, I didn't really see all the praise that Red Queen was getting. There were um, a couple of twists that I didn't really, you know, care about. And I decided that I am not gonna continue on with that series. It was just way overhyped and I didn't really like it. I ended up rating it two stars and you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. And yeah, it just wasn't for me. The next one that I wanna talk to you about is a recent read for me. I read it either last month or the month before, and that is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. This book was way overhyped. I remember BEA last year, and it's always almost been a complete year ago now. Uh, BEA last year, a lot of people were getting early copies of this, and since that time, I have had Truth Witch shoved down my throat in the blog world on here on YouTube, and I just, I was, at first, I didn't think I was gonna pick it up, but it sounded really cool. When people told me it was about two witches that were best friends and about their adventures, I was like, oh my gosh, sign me up. But although it does have two best friend witches in there, you don't get any of their friendship. You just get told that they're best friends and then you have to run with that thought. Um, there, Nothing much really happened. It seems like too much was trying to be done in one book and it's gonna be done over a six book series. So I feel that more action needed to be in the first book and less like political world considering we weren't going to those particular places. So with not much happening, not really any action, 
being told instead of shown, ugh, it was a miss for me. I gave this one two stars as well. The next three books that I wanna talk to you about, um, so the fourth one and the fifth one is gonna be all of the Lee Bardugo books. The Grisha trilogy, I was really disappointed by. I rated the first book three stars, the second book two stars, and the third book four stars. The only book that I really did enjoy out of the trilogy was the third and final book, Rune and Rising. A lot of people definitely are gonna disagree with me on this one, but it definitely was not the trilogy for me. It was supposed to be this awesome fantasy fantasy world and there were supposed to be some characters that I was definitely supposed to love that I didn't and ones that other people didn't even mention I ended up liking more and just overall this definitely wasn't the um, trilogy for me because the action was not balanced things were confusing I wasn't connecting to characters that other people were and that middle book was just really bad for me so yeah the Grisha trilogy the next book is another Lee Bardugo book, and that is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. While I didn't dis dislike this book as much as some of the others on the list, it definitely was getting high praises. This is another one that people were getting early arcs of, and I was just hearing about it for such a long time. Um, it's a gorgeous looking book. The front cover, the black pages, um, just the book is gorgeous, but the story just didn't work for me. It was supposedly set in the same Grishavers from the Grisha trilogy and just followed a new set of characters. And while I liked the characters on their own, I know it was only the first book in, I don't know if it's a duology um, or a trilogy or what, but I think it's only supposed to be a duology. I liked the characters enough, but I didn't like them necessarily together. And the action again was just not balanced. There were just times where I was so bored reading this and I just didn't care. So I ended up rating Six of Crows three stars. Um, when I was finished with it, I liked the overall story, but that journey getting there was just totally unfulfilling. The next book is a book that BookTube definitely recommended to me time and time again, and that is The Unbecoming of Meyer Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. I have only read the first book in this trilogy, and I still haven't decided if I want to move on. I had heard so many great things about this being a little bit paranormal, an unreliable narrative, and I don't know if it's just because I've only read the first book. I did like the romance aspects that were included in the first book, um, but the paranormal thing was just weird to me, and just the overall story just seemed kind of strange. I ended up rating this three stars because it wasn't horrible, but I definitely did not enjoy it as much as I thought that I would based on what people were saying here on YouTube. So those are the six books that I really could do without. Um, thanks, but no thanks, BookTube. And my two DNFs that I wanted to go ahead and mention is This Is How You Lose Her by um, Juno Diaz. And I really thought that I would like this. It was, I got recommended this book or I felt like I was recommended this book. I saw a video about literary fiction and how to get into it and this was one of the books recommended. It was saying that it was really easy to read and it was a really great story and there's so much praise surrounding the author and this book and it just, I DNF'd it guys so you can imagine how I felt about it. The next one is one that I know a lot of people are gonna disagree about, and they're gonna be shocked that I DNF'd it, but I have talked about it here before on my channel, and that is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I was super excited to finally get my hands on a copy of the book. Thank goodness I got it on discount for super, super cheap, but I ended up DNFing this because I loved the 1920s. I loved that era. I love The Great Gatsby. I had just finished watching The Great Gatsby and I was like, yes, this is the perfect timing. I'm in that 1920s vibe mood. Everybody's always recommending this. Let me go ahead and pick it up. 
and I started reading it and I read just a couple of ch chapters. I think I was like maybe 60 or 70 pages in and I DNF'd it. The writing was strange and different and I just couldn't get into it. The story still intrigues me and I might try it on audiobook, but I'm not really sure and I don't think I'll continue in the series, obviously. So those are some terrible books that I read because of booktube and coming up in my next video, I will be sharing some of the amazing books that I have read because of booktube. But that's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section below if you agree or disagree with some of the books that I have chosen and let me know some terrible books that you have read because of booktube. But I'll see you again in my next video. Bye! <laughs>